for his conservative views on faith. Trump with the Reverend Jerry Falwell has never been one to back down from a fight. Pretty tough cookie. So where does he stand on what Jesus would do about the war? Poverty, global warming. So let's find out. We welcome Reverend Jerry Falwell to the showroom. Falwell, how you doing, I'm sir? Rolling. Good, Bye. good to see you. You've written online that uh, God is pro-war. Would Jesus support the war in Iraq? Well, I don't believe God is pro-war, but I do believe there are just wars. I think World War II was a just war. If we had not taken Adolf Hitler head to head, we might all be speaking German now. I believe that what Mr. Bush is doing in Iraq and Afghanistan is a just war against terror. God hates war, but there are biblically established just wars. And while we I have grandchildren old enough almost to, to go to war, I hope they never have to, but I do support uh, the right of a nation to defend its freedoms and to, to defend its borders. Some folks are suggesting that this is a holy war and that you have Christian and Muslims being pitted against one another. Uh, some have suggested that uh, the same thing. You have Muslims who are saying that Allah sanctions a violence. You even have some Christians who sort of said that. How do we deal with this fractious relationship between folks from various faiths? Well, this is not a war against Islam. Unfortunately, the terrorism primarily getting 911 or going back way before that uh, 10 years has come primarily from Islamic terrorists not from Islam but from Islamic terrorists and uh, this is not uh, a war of Christians against uh, uh, Muslims it is a war of America against terrorism and it just happens that at this point in history those who are bringing grief to us are Islamic terrorists but it's important that we understand this is not, is not a holy war. Herman Fall, I want to bring the topic uh, back to our shores. Uh, lots of conversation over the last several years, even this year, as it relates to faith. Uh, folks going back and forth in terms of abortion, homosexuality. You don't see the same type of emphasis on poverty, on homelessness, on dealing with global warming, dealing with health care and education. And so it's interesting that you have uh, Christians who are out there fighting for, for ballot initiatives for abortion and gay marriage, but not those issues. Why are those not as prominent as those two issues? There, it sounds like there's an imbalance here. Well, there are many, many people who have a special I believe that Pope John Paul II had a particular calling uh, towards defending the, the life, the sanctity of unborn children, and establishing the family as one man married to one woman uh, for one lifetime. I believe that many others have that particular and specific calling. There are others of us uh, who take it beyond that. We, we do believe that we should uh, be feeding the poor. That's, poor. That's not to say the Pope doesn't agree with that, but mm -hmm. it is to say that we do have a tremendous responsibility. I've been pastor of the same church 51 years, and we have a home for unwed mothers. We have a home for alcoholics and drug addicts. We have a prison ministry. We have a home for a uh, home for the homeless, and on on the list goes. But, but, but it's what we, a church ought to be doing. Absolutely, but are we going to see that become a national movement in terms of like we see on the other issues? Well, the reason is not, and I doubt it ever will be, is that it is not controversial and it does not sell newspapers. <laughs> uh, what sells newspapers is uh, is violence and and head to head and bloodshed, that kind of thing. And uh, very frankly, uh, we're not going to get much help from the media in general on the moral and spiritual issues. But as believers who take the Bible to be the Word of God. You can't back down because a Republican or a Democrat opposes it. Let me do with presidential politics. Uh, James Dobson, Focus on the Family, made some comments to U.S. News and World Report where he was highly critical of former Senator Fred Thompson saying evangelicals are wary of him because they don't know whether or not he's really a strong Christian. Yet he gave great praise to Newt Gingrich, a guy who's been married three times, uh, you know, who admitted to an affair. It sounded to me a little weird there that you would criticize a guy saying, I don't really know where he stands on his faith, but I'm going to praise the guy who's been married three times and cheated on his wife. Well, I, uh, I researched that, by the way. I was, uh, when I first saw it in the press, taken back. Dr. Dobson is a great man of God, and I thought there had to be two sides to it. Uh, that was uh, taken out of context, and he questioned the, uh, the, the realness of Fred Thompson's uh, faith. I, I happen to, to know Fred Thompson, and I've met him, and I do believe he's a man of faith and and as far as new Gingrich and uh, and Ju Rudy Giuliani both of whom uh, have been through two divorces we certainly preach for and reach out for for 
uh, the that which is the ideal. But this is not an ideal world, and uh, we're not going to elect a Sunday school teacher to run the pre the presidency. Well, actually, we did, so, we, we did it one time, Jimmy Carter. Well, yeah, and he was the worst we had in 40 years, let, but, but uh, go ahead. Let me ask you this. Is there a Christian litmus test for a presidential candidate? Should we be basing our choice on whether they stand on faith? Well, I, I, can only, yeah, I, I think that the ideal is that we would have a man or a woman of faith who also is right on the moral issues. But I've known men and women of faith who didn't have a clue regarding uh, national security didn't have a clue about how to deal with with uh, terrorism had no idea about how to change the federal courts and to defend the unborn and so it, it's like this I would rather have uh, an atheist who is a neurosurgeon of uh, of excellent uh, talents operating on me if I ever need a brain surgery than to have the best Sunday school teacher in the world who doesn't know a thing about it. I'd much rather have the atheist if that is his specialty. We've got to elect a president uh, who, whether he or she goes to church or which church or whatever, uh, understands the issues. And the top issue today in our culture is survival. Mm -hmm. uh, right now in the war against terror and Islamic terrorism, uh, it is the most dangerous time I've known in my 73 years. I've lived through Hitler, Nazism, Communism. This is the most dangerous time uh, America has faced. And the next president has got to have a grip on the, uh, this gravity of terrorism and the survival of the people and has got to be willing to take the battle, whether it's to Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever, to defend our children and children's children. I gotta agree. If I'm on the emergency table, you're right. If it's an atheist who's cutting me, that's fine. As long as you're good. <laughs> Reverend Jerry Falwell, I certainly appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. We're really just getting started. Coming up, Pastor Rick Warren. He says he's a conservative, but definitely not a part of the religious right. Find out why he's rocking the boat. Also, was Jesus married? It doesn't really matter. A cardinal and a rabbi tackle that burning question that keeps being asked. Stay with us.